Hi, good afternoon everybody. I just want to continue a little bit what I was talking about yesterday. I just want to first of all say that I absolutely believe Richard Spencer is a, is a bad guy. You know, or at least his beliefs and his ideas are evil. You know, I don't want to make a comment about an individual ad hominem. But certainly his ideology is disastrous and evil and wrong. Um, the point that I was trying to bring out more was that just because he expresses a support for the ideology of Zionism, and he is a racist, perhaps. It's, it's, I, I would say, you know, 99% he's a racist. I don't want to make a definite statement, but it, it, it looks like, you know, 99%. I would, it would be pretty easy to categorize Richard Spencer as a racist. Um, he, uh, and my point really was more that just because President Trump is pro-Israel doesn't mean that he's racist in the way that Richard Spencer is racist. I think that's pretty much uh, the point that I was trying to bring out in these other videos. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, you can be pro-Israel and not be pro Jewish, and I agree with that idea, but I'm not going to go so far as to say that everyone who is pro-Israel is an anti-Semite or a racist. Um, I do believe that this central idea of Zionism is racist, particularly for including secularists who identify as Jewish as part of the Jewish people. That's probably one of the biggest sins of Zionism. Um, and so it makes sense because the Zionists were Nazi collaborators. And really, I would, it would almost seem that that's where the Nazis got that idea of, you know, that, that Jews are a racial group or something, which is, it never was before, you know, meaning all throughout Jewish history, a Meshumid, someone who was Jewish and left Judaism, was never considered to be part of the Jewish community. Um, they were not considered to be a Gentile, but they were not considered to be a Jew either. It's a third category of, of Yisrael Mumer, of an apostate. Anything really other than that is essentially racist. Now, I'm pretty liberal as to saying what's a religious Jew. You know, I mean, the Reform are religious. Even if I disagree with their approach to religion. But they, they go to the temple, they recite prayers, they read scripture. They perform some mitzvahs, even if they might not do them always right or whatever. You know, they have the basics of our liturgy and of our scriptures, even if their beliefs about our liturgy and our scripture and our precepts are perhaps even heretical but they are still religious, meaning that it's a religious inclination, and so it's not racist. You know, if anything, to a certain extent, the Reform are less racist, because they will, first of all, although it's in violation of halacha, that they recognize um, patrilineal descent, and also a violation of halacha, that their conversion, you know, doesn't require mikvah and so forth. Um, 
that's on one end, but on the other end, even if someone is born Jewish to a Jewish mother, and Halacha would recognize them as Jewish, meaning that as Israel Mummer, that they're not a Gentile, if they have no connection to the Jewish community in any form, and they pretty much identify with another religion, something like that, they, they're not going to say this person is therefore a Jew. It's a mistake that a lot of people make about patrilineal descent and Reform Judaism, even though I believe it's wrong, halakhically speaking, and I do believe that someone who has patrilineal descent, they want to be halakhically part of the Jewish community, they have to undergo gerus, they have to go to the mikveh, and so forth. But, you know, I guess the way I'll say it is like this. The Reform wouldn't recognize, let's say, I don't know, Barry Goldwater as Jewish. Not because his mother wasn't Jewish, but because he was a practicing Episcopalian. Meaning, patrilineal descent in the Reform movement is not automatic Jewishness. Uh, it's more about, does this person choose to self-identify as a Jew? And, you know, the fact that they don't have mikvah generally in their and and their and and their gerus otherwise, some you know they allow it, but they don't really push it. Uh, again, it's uh, it's interesting, you know, that there is uh, that that's how it is. But meaning to say that it's. You know, I mean, I, I read about the description of Marilyn Monroe's conversion to Judaism. Um, you know, and no mikvah involved, but, you know, a certain level of sincerity there. She identified as Jewish after she divorced uh, Arthur Miller, you know. Um, and so, yeah, halakhically orthodox, we can't recognize her as Jewish, but, you know, there's a certain level of sincerity in that. And I, but the, the point that I kind of also want to say is that, you know, that the, many of the orthodox are wrong to say, well, uh, Elvis Presley is Jewish because his mother's mother was Jewish when he was a devout Christian because his mother's mother allegedly was Jewish, so therefore he's Jewish. It's not exactly so. Again, we want to say he's not a Gentile. That would be accurate, perhaps. The term Gentile just means nation. It just means, you know. But that could... But again, already it's... It's two generations away, you know. It's not... Not the way people are saying it, but I, again, I strongly disagree with Richard Spencer's ideology. Back to this subject, I was reading a little bit more about him, but it's fascinating to me how he sounds to me. You know, he describes himself as a white Zionist or the white equivalent of a Zionist, and the equivalency that that he has to not only Zionism but the secular Jewish culture that we have. It's fascinating. Not only the fact that he supports a lot of left-wing ideology of big government and um, abortion and things like that, uh, basically eugenics, uh, which is also what he has in common with the left. And, and really, uh, like I've always said, the alt-right is a left-wing movement. That's why it's, the, it's, the, it's supposed to be an alternative to the right. It's almost in the way that the Nazis spoke of positive Christianity, meaning to say, you take out all the thou shalt not out of Christianity, which are the Jewish roots of Christianity, the Ten Commandments and so forth, that Hitler wanted to take out of the Christian culture and just replace it with 
what Richard Spencer refers to as it being culturally Christian. Um, meaning Richard Spencer identifies as an atheist, but as culturally Christian. And that, that sounds like what a lot of the secular Jews, you know, they, they'll say they're culturally Jewish, but they don't actually believe or practice anything Jewish. And again, I'm not talking about reform, definitely not talking about conservative. These movements, you know, are religious movements. But I know a lot of people will claim that, you know, reform is the biggest movement, and it really isn't. The biggest is just secular and, and you know, having no real Jewish identity or anything, you know. And... You know, it's ignorance. It's you know, we could discuss the, all the halachas of what it means at Tinik Shunishbo. and certainly, it's a wonderful thing to to make Hashavas Aveda to bring back someone to do kiruv and, and, and bring people back to Yiddishkeit. But it's just as wonderful, if not perhaps even more wonderful, to to make kiruv. If you're gonna have a real erlich and sincere air, or even just a regular. Here, who's going to be just a, a regular, nice, mediocre, religious Jew is still going to be better than most Jews in the world, right? Most people who might, I would say, be halachically not Gentiles. Um, you know, but certainly, you know, someone, even if they're not totally observant, nobody's totally observant, but they're trying their best and they're, you know, they're involved in some way in Yiddishkeit, that's very positive, but I just, I find it fascinating that what, what he says about being a, a what do you call it, a, um, a, a cultural Christian, that's a fascinating, fascinating idea, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's really, um, To, to, to identify as such a thing mean to identify as an atheist with a Christian culture meaning I guess it means he celebrates Christmas and Easter he might even go to church you know on those days but not actually believe but do so for fellowship or something like that you know it's um It's fascinating how similar that is to uh, so much of the of the Jewish community, you know. And so, you know, the the big difference I would say between Spencer and Zionism, and I and I strongly oppose Zionism, is that he wants to make his. Christian Zionist or his white Zionist in America in North America as opposed to Europe meaning at, at least uh, although the truth is that the early Zionists were considering uh, Uganda or somewhere in upstate New York and the Finger Lakes or this or that but the um, the, you know, essentially, you know, Zionism is called Zionism because of Zion. They want to go back to Jerusalem. They want to go back to the Holy Land. So, um, for, you know, and it's not, and, and, and the same thing, you know, the black slaves that went back to Liberia, that type of thing, which I think is, foolish thing anyway, but, you know, America was not like that. If anything, you know, America belonged to the Native Americans, right? But, uh, today, uh, it, it, at work, the Native Americans had their green corn feast, and during the feast, they took out the American flag and the POW flag to, to honor 
the warriors, to honor this country, to honor this land, and to honor the warriors of this land. And so they, you know, many Native Americans do recognize all Americans as Americans. And I think that's what, like I said about um, Mark Levin, about the difference between nationalism and Americanism, that American nationalism is not based on race, not based even on, uh, you know, the finer points of culture and things. I mean, there is an American culture, um, and there are various American cultures, and there's more local cultures, um, but the things that we share in common is the value of individual liberty, um, the value of, you know, being a, uh, an American that doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter what religion, what matters is do you value freedom, you know? And so, like, we talk about, like, the difference between, you know, certain, um, you know, it's not about Muslims aren't welcome in America, but people who want to impose... Sharia as the law of the land, and there's but there's a lot of and there are people like that. There are the Islamo nationalists um, who want to make conquest of these different countries, but the um, you know there. But then again, there's a lot of hysteria. We see his uh, Sharia courts. If a Sharia court is the same like a Besdin or even a, a Catholic canon law court or something. There's nothing wrong with that, to have a court to, you know, dispute with divorce and, and marriage and things, and, and even arbitration of civil matters. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's it's helpful. It, it, it removes a burden from the justice system, from, from the court system, from the uh, civil court system, and it's welcome, really. Um... You know, the same thing, uh, I, I heard even the Romani, the gypsies, they have gypsy court, I heard such a thing exist, you know, the Amish, I mean, all these, as long as there, there no crimes are being committed and so forth, there's nothing wrong with that, and that is part of the American realm, you know, there's nothing, you know, we, nobody has any problems in America with someone praying five times a day and not eating pork, you know, so uh, that's... You know, and, the, uh, and dressing modestly and so forth. You know, and these are things that we have to have in mind. Um, but the thing is, and, and the, the truth is, a community like that is not a threat to America the way it is a threat to France or Germany or Italy. You know? Um... But the thing is, is uh, you know, I, I much prefer the American ideal. You know, I, I'm rambling on. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. See you later.